Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe for better stories next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Kubo and his two strings from Kubo and the Two Strings. Was the movie a big financial hit? Not really, but it's an absolute masterpiece, and if you haven't seen it, you should. Just rent it, watch it, and thank me later. If you must blink, do it now. You used to call me on my cell phone. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need a shamisen full of magic, which is a three-stringed instrument despite the movie's misleading name. Next, we need the power of paper with origami to get things done. Finally, we'll make sure that our music is uplifting figuratively and literally, filling us with the power of flight. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want. All you're gonna be needing is charisma, so make that your top stat. You can really capture the hearts and minds of the public. Dexterity after that, you're a tough kid to pin down, and it helps to have sleight of hand if you're performing on the street. Wisdom next, animals like you, and you're good at cooking, even if the animals that like you are actually your mom and all you cook is rice. Follow that up with intelligence, you can't tell a good story without at least a little bit of knowledge. Constitution is on the lower end, but we're gonna dump strength for the same reasons. You're a child who eats rice and plays music, that's not exactly gonna turn you into a bodybuilder. I was gonna make Kubo a human, but you know, you do have some Moon King blood in your veins, so we'll go with a Protector Azamar, which will give you plus two charisma and plus one wisdom, 60 feet of dark vision, celestial resistance for resistance to radiant and necrotic damage, the light bearer ability for the light cantrip, and healing hands to restore an amount of HP equal to your total level as an action once per long rest. You do kind of play Doogie Hauser for your mom while she's getting back on her feet. For your background, folk hero seems fitting because everyone in town likes you, it gives you proficiency with survival and animal handling, no charisma skills weirdly enough, but we're gonna get plenty in a second. We'll kick things off as a bard, I know I just made Scarecrow, but if there were ever two builds to show off how different one class can be, these would be the two. You can grab three skills from the bard list, which is also known as every skill in the game. Pick up persuasion, acrobatics, and performance. I chose performance last to get as many people freaking out in the comments as possible. It's good for the YouTube algorithm. You get bardic inspiration, which are D6s you can give to your parents as a bonus action to add to an ability check, saving throw, or attack roll by playing a couple of tasty riffs. Fury Cantrip's Mage Hand lets you pick up objects weighing 10 pounds or less with a floating magical hand, but if you want to reflavor that as a floating paper hand, I'd allow it as the DM. Message lets you send a secret message to someone within 120 feet of you that they can send back. Communication is key for an effective party or a happy family. Take your pick. For your first level spells, Featherfall slows the falling of up to five friendly creatures as a reaction, letting everyone flutter back down to the ground instead of crashing. Thunder Wave forces a constitution saving throw of eight, plus your charisma modifier and proficiency bonus on creatures in a 15-foot cube in front of you, dealing 2d8 thunder damage and pushing them back 10 feet if they fail. Half as much damage if they succeed, and they are pushed. I've heard of power cords, but that's ridiculous. Heroism gives a creature immunity to fear and temporary HP equal to your charisma modifier at the start of their turns. Keep in mind, temporary HP does not stack, so think of it as refreshing rather than growing. Identify lets you tell what a magical item is and what it does, letting you know if there's a sword unbreakable, armor invulnerable, or helm of comprehending languages. That last one's not in the movie, but it is in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Second level bards become jacks of all trades, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to skills you're not proficient with. If you want to be a master storyteller, it helps to be well-rounded. You also get Song of Rest, letting your allies heal an extra d6 on short rests. Your mom has been through a lot, she deserves a night off. For this level spell, Long Strider will help her stay calm while you run away, increasing a target's movement speed by 10 feet. Use it on yourself for some pep in your step. Third level bards get expertise in two skills, doubling your proficiency bonus. I'll go with performance and acrobatics to play sweeter songs and slip out of grapples easier. You can also choose a bardic college, and you might be a little young for your bachelor's, but with the College of Creation being so up your alley, you could probably graduate early. You can physically manifest your music with a note of potential, meaning that if an ally uses your bardic inspiration for an attack roll, creatures within five feet of it have to make a constitution save or take thunder damage equal to the roll on the inspiration die. If they use it for a saving throw, they get temporary HP equal to the die rolled plus your charisma modifier, and if they use it for an ability check, they can roll your inspo die with advantage. Think of these as little fluttering paper airplanes that do a little bit extra. For this level spell, Enthrall gets people 
so into your songs that they have to make a wisdom saving throw or have disadvantage on perception checks to see other creatures. If you're already fighting the creature, they have advantage on that wisdom save, but your jams are so sweet it could be hard to look away, especially if you make a fire-breathing chicken. People love the chicken. As a protector Azamar, you also get Radiant Soul, which gives you a flying speed of 30 feet per round and lets you add your level in radiant damage to an attack you make, including spell attacks, for a minute per long rest. You don't currently have any spell attacks, but that's fine. I don't want you going full moon child until late in the game anyway, because it's not really something you do until late in the movie. Still, an early flying speed is nice, and you've got the paper to make it happen. Fourth level bards get an ability score improvement, bump up that charisma for higher saving throws and sweeter performances. For this level spell, enhance ability is like super inspiration die, letting you give a creature advantage on checks and saves of a specific ability. If you choose strength, you also double their carrying capacity. If you choose dex, they also don't take fall damage from heights of 20 feet or less. And if you choose constitution, they also get 2d6 temporary HP. This buff lasts for an hour, depending on your concentration, meaning you've basically got to play a whole album from memory Best of luck, kid. Fifth level bards can learn third level spells. Sending lets you send a message of 25 words or less to someone on the same plane of existence, and they can reply immediately. It's basically the message cantrip with a range of the entire planet. You can also send it to other planes if you want to call your grandfather a putz, but there's a 5% chance it fails and you wasted a third level spell slot, so maybe save that for emergencies. You also get a font of inspiration, letting you recover inspiration die on short rests instead of long rests. Your inspiration die bumps up to a D8 for something the whole family can bop. Too. Sixth level bards get counter charm, letting you give your allies advantage on saves against being charmed or frightened, but since your allies are your parents, they're most likely going to be more afraid of you getting hurt, so maybe just cast Longstrider and run away. You also get your best third level spell from the Creation College. It's called Animating Performance. It turns a non-magical item of large or smaller into a dancing item. The stat block is attached to the Unearthed Arcana for College of Creation, but let's explain it because Paper Friends is kind of Kubo's whole deal. It has HP equal to five times your bard level, plus your charisma modifier, plus three, because that's its constitution modifier. It takes the dodge action on its turn, unless you command it to do something else with your bonus action. Its attack is called Force Empowered Slam, uses your spell attack modifier, and deals 1d10 plus your charisma modifier in force damage, and it dodges automatically as a bonus action after making that attack, so hopefully it doesn't die. Honestly, it's a better fighter than you are. You get to summon this once per long rest for free, but can do it again with a third level spell slot for more paper power. If you only care about storytelling with your paper though, Major Image creates an illusion that fits into a 20 foot cube, complete with sound, smell, and temperature. It's not real, so people can see through it with an investigation check, and it doesn't hold up to physical inspection. But if you're just entertaining the town, who cares that everything's made out of paper? 7th level bards can learn 4th level spells. Freedom of movement gives a target immunity to difficult terrain, nothing can slow them down, and they can't be paralyzed or restrained for an hour, no concentration required. You're pretty mobile for a musician, which is good, it's kind of boring when the guitar just stand still. 8th level bards get an ability score improvement, we'll use it to cap off our charisma, then move on to our dexterity for a better AC, because it's kind of a bummer whenever you get hit. For this level spell, let's dip back to the first level for Healing Word, which heals 1d4 plus your charisma modifier to a creature within 60 feet as a bonus action. Now a d4 might not sound too impressive, but because it's a bonus action and it has range, this spell is insanely effective at preventing death saving throws. Ninth level bards can learn 5th level spells, Animate Objects brings 10 tiny objects objects to life. It can bring larger objects to life, but we're just going to be using this for an armory of paper pieces, so tiny is going to work best. Tiny objects have 20 HP, 18 AC, 4 strength, 18 dexterity, 10 constitution, 3 intelligence and wisdom, and 1 charisma. You can command one of these as a bonus action to make an attack with a plus 8 to the attack roll, and it'll deal 1d4 plus 4 bludgeoning damage. They'll also defend themselves, and you can give them commands to guard places, which basically lets you create a little paper minefield with one big paper construct from your animated performance acting as the conductor. Your Song of Rest also bumps up to a D8, which isn't the best, honestly, but again, your mom has earned a little bit of time off. 10th level bards get expertise into more skills, persuasion, and survival, maybe? Up to you, honestly. You also get to bump your inspiration die to a d10 and get some magical secrets, which are two spells that you can grab from any list. Fly gives a creature you touch a flying speed of 60 feet per round. You could use it on yourself or an ally or both actually, as it's a third level spell and casting it at higher levels gives it to more people. It lasts for 10 minutes depending on your concentration, so watch out if you're high up, falling damage can really hurt. Magic Missile is some quick little paper darts. It fires three darts that deal one d4 plus one force damage each, and they'll never miss unless the target is cast shield. 
This is our first spell attack at level 10, and it doesn't even require a modifier. Oh well, something to add your Radiant Soul Blast to at the very least. 11th level bards can learn 6th level spells. Find the path will get you a little Hanzo guide, letting you know the fastest and most direct route to a location you choose, though if it's a moving fortress or if it's on another plane, the spell's gonna fail. It also doesn't necessarily send you on the safest path, so beware of a giant skeleton man, apparently those are a thing. 12th level bards get another ability score improvement, bump up that dexterity to be as nimble as your paper constructions. 13th level bards can learn 7th level spells, but let's actually grab modify memory from the 5th level. Sure, you can use this to force a wisdom spell saving throw on a creature, then change their memory of a 10 minute event from the last 24 hours, but you can also use it to give a creature perfect recall so your mom can tell you stories that you'll rip off tomorrow while you're busking. It only lasts for a minute though, so hopefully she gives you an ending, otherwise you're gonna have to keep doing filler arcs. 14th level creation bards get performance of creation, letting you create a large non-magical item that costs less than 20 times your bard level. You have to keep that created object going as an action on your turns for the next minute, then it stays in existence for a number of hours equal to your bard level. You might not be able to create a full sailing boat, but you could make a little boat and get your party on the water for 14 hours at least. You can do this again with a 5th level spell slot. For something similar, grab Fabricate from Magical Secrets. It's a 4th level spell that creates a large or smaller non-magical magical object, but it has to be made up of existing material and takes 10 minutes to cast, so you need a little bit more patience for this one. For your other spell, Contact Other Plane is a 5th level spell that lets you ask a creature on another plane up to 5 questions that it will give you 1 word answers to. Of course, this is only after you make a DC 15 intelligence saving throw. Failing that, you're going to take 66 psychic damage and lose your mind, meaning that you can't speak, read, or take actions until you take a long rest. It can be hard talking to estranged family members, especially when they're hostile moon deities. 15th level bards can learn 8th level spells. Glibness lets you replace what you roll for a charisma check with a 15, meaning that you're never going to hit a wrong note thanks to your capped off performance skill. Additionally, any spell that could detect if you were lying makes it seem like you're telling the truth. Bards just sort of have chaotic energy and so do their spells, but you'll obviously just be using this to play better music because you're a good kid. Your bardic inspiration die also bumps up to a d12 for maximum inspiration. 16th level bards get an ability score improvement, round up your dexterity, and get an odd number in your intelligence. We'll round it off later for a safer chance with your grandfather, but more AC right now will keep you safer from just about everything. 17th level bards can learn 9th level spells. Foresight gives a creature you choose advantage on attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws. Creatures attacking them have disadvantage on their attack rolls, and they can't be surprised for 8 hours, no concentration required. Hopefully this will make your DM feel better when they put Guitar Kid against Lich. Your Song of Rest Eye also bumps up to a D12, which could heal 12 whole hit points. That's not even a lot for you. You don't have a lot of HP. That's really sad. 18th level bards get our last magical secrets. Counterspell is a third level spell that shuts down spells of third level or lower automatically as a reaction and can shut down higher level spells with a charisma check of 10 plus the spell's level. This pairs insanely well with glibness, basically automatically shutting down any spell that comes in. Expeditious Retreat is a first level spell. It lets you dash as a bonus action for up to 10 minutes, letting you get where you need to go, especially if where you need to go is somewhere that is not where you are. 19th level bards get an ability score improvement, but we're actually going to grab the resilient feat to give you proficiency with intelligence saving throws and plus one to your intelligence score, basically taking your intelligence save from plus one to plus eight in one level, which should help you safely talk to your extended family. Our capstone is the 20th level of bard, giving you superior inspiration, so anytime you roll initiative and don't have inspiration die, you'll get one always being ready with a little bit of magical assistance. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you have a ton of supportive spells and bardic inspiration to keep your family safe. You're also very mobile with plenty of spells to make sure that you can get out of dodge if you really need to. Finally, you're loaded up with expertise, helping get things done before initiative gets rolled. And that's probably important because you're not really combat focused at all. You don't deal good damage, relying almost entirely on animated objects, which don't really put the hurt on. You're also low on health with barely 100 HP if you're lucky, meaning that you're going to get taken out fairly quickly. Finally, you've got somewhere around 15 AC, so the hits are going to be hitting. So get clever, use your ridiculous charismatic abilities to get things done before anyone actually starts attacking you. Despite your phenomenal magical abilities, you're still just a kid. Stay safe and keep the more active party members performing as well as you do. But really focus on that stay safe aspect, otherwise your shamisen won't be the only thing gently weeping. Thanks for watching. If you like the video for more, we make two videos every week. May is quickly approaching. If you want to see the schedule for that month, join the Patreon. $1 per month gets you schedule updates. $2 will get you into the Discord. And as always, sub to Tulak and Mango. It's a good time.